All right, everyone, it's time for surreal news once more. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Bahrain have uh, cut ties diplomatically with the nation of Qatar, uh, saying, oh, well, they're sponsoring terrorism and terrorist propaganda. Now, I think they run Al Jazeera, too, uh, which means they have their own legacy media outlet that they foist off on the Western world. Uh, sort of a little bit BBC-esque, only with, a, I guess, a Middle Eastern spin which means BBC esque <laughs> actually come to think of it uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, they've cut ties with them for sponsoring like the Muslim Brotherhood and stuff now I can understand why Egypt would do this Egypt has problems with the Muslim Brotherhood you gotta remember Egypt is one of the nations of the Middle East not run by some sort of theocratic or theocratic light group and not currently engaged in civil war they have problems with Isis wandering around the Sinai and trying uh, constant incursions also uh, on their western side because of course ISIS controls most of Libya at this point uh, and then tribal uh, Sharia law lovers control most of the rest so they're, they're sort of between a cock and a hard place geographically but Egypt uh, their their military rose up and, and ousted the Muslim Brotherhood Obama loved the Muslim Brotherhood he thought it was great that their constitution was going to basically be a form of Sharia law now the the model he wanted for Egypt which is nationalistic Sharia sort of theocracy is exactly what he also tried to export to Syria he failed in Egypt thankfully which means that Egypt is more or less stable now things are seemingly calm for the most part um, Syria is in uproar but at the same time with Russia helping Assad wipe out Isis uh, and with the FSA sort of uh, kind of crumbling uh, it looks uh, the future looks brighter for Syria now than it did maybe a couple of years ago you know when Assad's forces have been uh, pretty badly uh, scarred and then Iran gets involved and nobody wants to screw around with them but it's really it's funny to see the Saudi Arabians of all people the Saudi government saying and that it's going to cut ties with the nation for sponsoring terrorism I guess they mean uh, Shia groups as opposed to the Wahhabis that Saudi Arabia itself funds and this is is uh, fantastic because of course Isis is a Wahhabi group Al Qaeda is a Wahhabi group Boko Haram if I remember correctly is a Wahhabi group these are all sort of Saudi aligned Sunni groups they have nothing to do with Shia Islam Shia is Hezbollah and groups like that and as for the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt I think they're majority Sunni as well so what the heck are the Saudi Arabians talking about I smell a rat uh, it's also funny because you remember both Qatar and Saudi Arabia who now are in a squabble and cutting off diplomatic and transport ties with one another funded Hillary Clinton's political campaign now uh, you know I, I would say oh funded the Clinton Foundation for charitable purposes yes because giving anti HIV medication to homosexuals is something that the Saudi Arabians are really really heavily involved in they, they really care about that issue they don't want to see uh, homosexuals die except you know they, they want them to live so they can throw them off a building I guess according to the theocratic tenets of the House of Saud this is a strict very authoritarian regime within the Middle East even by Middle Eastern standards it's sort of like uh, you know Afghanistan light you, you go to one of these two states it's very severe Qatar is like maybe a little bit less so Egypt is downright permissive compared to the Saudi Arabians or to the Afghan or to the uh, governing force in Afghanistan which half the time is the Taliban or some tribal warlord the Taliban uh, you know gets money from or something like that oh yeah give us 10 percent of the the uh, taxed income from your province we'll leave you alone we'll go be maybe beat on your neighbors then you can actually have a better economy because people have to come here to buy the basic consumer goods or something it's all a money racket and so if the Saudi Arabians are cutting off ties to Qatar I have a feeling it has nothing to do with oh you know we've got to be moral here we got to crack down on terrorism maybe maybe there's just been a giant flux in the timeline and Trump has actually somehow managed to convince the Saudi government to stop funding these groups but I'll believe it when I see it now maybe it has something to do again money talks with the massive arms deal we just gave to them maybe it has something to do with that Trump said oh yeah you have these weapons but there's a catch you have to oust those Qataris 
and you, you're gonna have to back off on uh, funding some of these groups because I know you're doing it with your fucking slush funds. Otherwise, you wouldn't have given so many millions of dollars to my opponent. May she, you know, rot eternally when she's finally gone. And her, trust me, her mind is already gone. Got to weigh in on Hillary Clinton again. Even the DNC doesn't want her now. So yeah, looks like Qatar is in a in a little bit of rough shit. And this is basically a micro state. It's just this little tiny piece of land. Uh, Bahrain cutting ties with them though. Bahrain's even smaller. <laughs> it's like. Qatar is this tiny uh, peninsula. I think it's smaller than this state, which means it would take you like maybe half an hour to drive from one end to the other. Bahrain is is micro tiny. It's like Luxembourg size or something like that. Actually, I don't even know that it's that big. I think it's even smaller. I mean, it's literally, literally nothing more than an elongated little island or something like that. So it's funny to see the Saudis, though, say, oh, you're a state sponsor of terrorism. We're not going to have diplomacy with you. Uh, we can hope. We can hope that this is all part of Trump's plan, that he's the one that got the ball rolling, and he's actually somehow going to semi-modernize the Saudi regime. If he manages to do that, hell, that would bring more peace to the region than solving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Can you even imagine, you know, backing off support for like Muslim Brotherhood, FSA sort of groups. That's actually a big victory for Trump. It's a total 180 from Obama's policies. Obama's policy was secular nations within the Middle East need to fall because for some odd reason, it makes it better for the United States if we have to deal with some sort of oligarchic Sharia movement as opposed to a secular dictator that suppresses the groups that really want to attack us and our allies. I don't claim to understand exactly what his strategy was behind that. I'm assuming that some Grima worm tongue within his administration convinced him it was a good idea, because I can't imagine he thought it up himself. Now, Muslim Kenyan jokes aside, as for Trump, he's like, oh, we're going to abandon the FSA. We're going to sell weapons to the Saudis, yes, but we're uh, not going to pay lip service to the Muslim Brotherhood. You remember when Obama... After the Muslim Brotherhood fell in Egypt, like the people in the military rose up, beat the shit out of them, and cast them out of power and sort of banned them from holding office. Uh, you remember how Obama, he disappeared for a couple of months and just sulked, and you didn't really hear from him? And Obama, by the way, on the Hillary Clinton token, has the good sense to shut up while he's ahead, because he's actually, he's, he's not totally retarded. But Hillary Clinton is a totally different story, and I can't wait to make that video in just a few short minutes. That's going to be, oh, it's hysterical. You wouldn't even believe it. That's about all. Peace out.